Hello everyone, welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy, and this month we don't have too much to talk about actually. I know it's been a month since I have done the last video, and a lot of this stuff I'm actually not going to cover because a lot of it's going to be about official firmware stuff and I don't need to talk about every single firmware that has come out in the past because a lot of them are just about, you know, bug fixes, stability updates, and things like that. So I am not going to cover those and with that in mind, let's just go ahead and jump right in onto the Nintendo Switch. The newest official firmware for the Nintendo Switch is 6.0.0 and it will be all for online stuff for the actual online services and whatnot that Nintendo is doing. It features cloud saves as well as some new avatars and some other features that aren't really too important. The main thing you want to get out of it is when you update to the newest firmware 6.0 the Nintendo Network ID you have linked onto your user profile will be permanently on there. So make sure that whenever you update, all your Nintendo Network IDs are on the correct profile. That way you don't get stuck with a weird username or something like that. You know, you know what I'm saying? There was also a small rumor when this official firmware got released saying that it was a homebrew killer, which it is not. People have actually already delved into it, and you can still do everything that you were once able to do. Aside from the official firmware update on the Nintendo Switch, that is actually it for the Nintendo Switch. So let's jump right over to the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV, where we have some grim news. Unfortunately, there has been an update released for the PS Vita, and it is 3.69, and it does patch the H Encore exploit. So anyone who is on 3.68 and 3.65 and in between those do not update. You will not be able to use any of the H Encore features. Due to the H Encore exploit being patched, the flow has stated that he has released the source code for the exploit that way anyone who wants to view it can. He does not have any plans to update it to 3.69 and find another exploit with it. Also on the Vita, Enzo has been updated to 1.1. There was a very, very crucial but rare bug that you were able to run into if you were uninstalling Enzo and then also installing the newest firmware, I guess, or updating the firmware on the Vita. The good news is that bug that actually bricked the code will no longer do so which is great news. So for the people who do have the Enzo 1.0 who hasn't updated yet, I would highly recommend you doing so just in case so that you don't run into this bricking bug. Also on the Vita, we do know we've seen our fair share of overclocking applications and plugins. Now there is a new one because all the other ones actually are being blown out of the dust by this one because this overclocking plugin is able to overclock even farther than what the other ones are. Lollicon overclocking plugin, yes, it is called Lollicon. This overclocking plugin is able to go all the way up to 500 megahertz. I am unsure what the other previous plugins have been able to go up to, but this one is by far the fastest one. And also, not only does it cover the overclocking stuff, also you can do some little button mapping, mainly you switch the X and O button swapping, and there's some other things you can do with it as well, which do come in handy for those overclocking experiences. Lastly for the Vita, when the flow is not working on any, you know, huge breaking exploits, he definitely does work on other things, such as updating his dual analog support for PSP games. He has added Kingdom Hearts, Prince of Persia, and a Metal Solid Gear game. I said that backwards, but you know what I mean. Metal Gear Solid game. So if any of those games are something that you play, go ahead and update your dual analog plug-in thing and play those games with free camera movement at ease. On to the last system of the day, the PlayStation 4. We see a new official firmware update called 6.0 and it just does stability updates, that's it, nothing else. We don't know anything so far about it though when it comes to homebrew scene. We don't know if there's a private exploit out there or if it's even been modded yet or anything like that. I will keep you news on that, but as far as we know, do not update because as far as we know, the most public exploit out there there is is 5.05 and then you also have a user land exploit if I remember correctly on 5.50 or it's somewhere around there, I can't remember exactly. But yes, do not update to the newest firmware. 
Anyway guys, thank you for watching and if you did like this video, make sure you hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and that little mini bell icon, that way you don't miss any of my future videos. And with that, I shall see you next video.